I want to tell you about structures on the loop space. So uh, we have to start with uh, what is the loop space. I hear you have heard a little bit about loops uh, already. So, so we start with a space, x, some sort of space. And then from there, we can make a new space. by taking all maps from a circle into x. OK, we can do that. What does it look like? Well, x is here, and I'm looking at all maps from a circle into x. That's one loop into x, and then I can, look at a, I can make another one. OK, that's another loop. Uh, there are many loops. This is huge. Okay. So the first thing to note about it is uh, we started with a space which maybe was reasonable. We end up with a space which is not reasonable. Um, you can make this into a topological space. There's something, there are many models you could choose. We're going to just think the simplest model, which is we take all, when I write maps, I mean all continuous maps. OK, the circle goes to an actual circle. Um, we could restrict to nicer maps, but let's just think about continuous maps. And you can give it a topology. There's something called the compact, compact open topology, which says you, you get all open sets by starting from, you make a topology out of the sets that you like look at the maps that take a compact set <coughs> in what you start with into an open set. So this is open open in the target, and this is a compact uh, in, the, in, in the source, OK? So, so, so there is something called, yeah, there's a way of, of, there's a canonical way of putting a, a, a topology on, on such a space of maps, OK? So, so that's, that's, that's uh, the thing I want to study. So goal is to s study, study loop space, OK? Uh, so the first question you ask is why? Okay, why should we do this? Okay, so first answer is why not? Okay, it's a space. I'm a topologist. I like spaces. I like to know all spaces, also spaces that happen <coughs> to be loop spaces, right? This is a very special type of space. It's a space of loops. Um, another answer is you can say, oh, you know, I can pretend to do physics because you know loops, strings, you know. I'm doing string theory, maybe string topology. It's, it sounds good, OK? <laughs> That's another reason. Uh, maybe another reason, uh, what Nancy would say is uh, loops. Uh, loops know about geodesic, about closed geodesics. Uh, so ask Nancy. Um, so, so how does this work? Well, I should really work with, first, if I talk about geodesics, x better be a manifold, a nice space where geodesics exist. Maybe I should have a metric, all sorts of things. Uh, I should talk about C infinity maps, or maybe piecewise, or something a little nicer than just all continuous maps. OK, and then there's something called the energy of a loop, and this, the critical points of these are uh, the closed geodesics. So, so, so it really, you know, there is a precise way in which one can get, one can hope to study, uh, uh, one can study uh, geodesics out of uh, the loop space. <coughs> uh, the reason uh, I got into this business is because uh, the space of loops. Uh, well, knows about maybe a little bit about well. Okay, let me say this in a weaker sense. Space of loops has an interesting structure. That relates. Um, to the moduli space of Riemann surfaces. 
so we heard a little bit about women's surfaces uh, last Friday. Dennis mentioned this is an interesting space. Many people are interested in this space. It's a space of surfaces. It's a sp space of Riemann structures of all the possible Riemannian structures on a surface. Um, yeah. Why should surfaces have anything to do with loops? Well, you know, remember we were thinking we were doing string theory, we were doing strings and strings. You know, if you're a physicist, they evolve in time and then they collide, right? Here's a collision of two strings and then they keep and then maybe they split again and so on. And you see that they create surfaces, right? So somewhere surfaces <coughs> should have something to do uh, with strings. And so here's uh, I'll try to get, I'm going in this, the lectures are going in this direction. I'll get as far as I can. I don't know how much I'll say about the modular space of Riemann surfaces, blah, 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 but I'll, I'll try to get to some of the interesting, interesting <coughs> structure. Uh, and, and if I don't get there, you ask Kate, right? Kate is, Kate is there, <laughs> the TA, <laughs> Kate Poirier. Uh, she knows all about this. Okay, so so uh, what's my plan? My plan is today uh, is what can we do with loops? Part one. So I'm. Um, aiming at giving you a structure of this huge space. It's not just a huge space, it's a huge, huge space with some structure. Then tomorrow, I'll give you a simplicial model of the loop space. I'll explain what simplicial means, simplicial sets, simplicial things, and I'll do this, I'll take my time on this. To, that's the plan for tomorrow. From there, we'll get an algebraic model of the homology of the loop space. And then I'll use this to again go back and talk about uh, what can we do with loops part two, right? OK, so that's the. Uh, that's the plan. So, what can we do? Uh, there's what we call an S1 action. Loops can be rotated. Okay? If I have a loop in my space, it starts somewhere, it ends somewhere. Maybe people can see. Is this a visible? Yeah. OK. Uh, well, it has a start point, and it, has, it, ro it goes around. And then I could, you know, I could decide to change. This is, so my loop why is. Why does it start somewhere? Yeah, why does it start somewhere? Yeah, it's a map, right? Gamma is a map. I, I'm going to call my loops gamma as far as I can. So it's a map from S1 to X. And there's a point in, ah, what is S1? Let's start, start talking about what is S1. S1 for me is it's going to be the interval 0, 1 modulo 0 is equal to 1. OK, I'm gluing the interval on itself. Uh, but I also will think of it as R modulo the integers, right? I'm thinking. 0, 1, 2, minus 1. This is R with the, in the integers, and I can wrap them around my circle, right? And I can go, I go around my loop here, but I can do it again and again and again, OK? Uh, so in particular, I know where 0 is. I have a point on my circle called 0, and so there is a point here, which is gamma of 0, right? But also, each time I choose a time t, there's also a new point here called gamma of t, right? And so instead of starting at time 0, I could change my mind and say my loop starts here, right? 
right. So let me write this. I have a Use go back here. So let's let, let, let's write this formally. <coughs> formally, what we have is we have a map from S one cross the loop space to the loop space. And what does it do? It takes a, a point t in the, in, the, in the circle and the loop, a map from the S1 to x, and it maps it to gamma of the loop evaluated at time plus t. But I add, instead of, so this, this loop at 0, it will take the value of gamma of t. So it starts at gamma of t, and then it keeps going. And when I write this, I'm thinking <coughs> modulo the integers, right? t is somewhere here. And so I'm reading my loop here now. Right? But this will wrap around and, and come back. This, this little bit will, will come, back, come back over here. Okay? So there is a rotation. We can rotate loops. And this means formally that there is such a, such a map. Any Happy? Yes? OK. I said the loop, a loop, it starts somewhere, and then it goes in one direction. right? So what can we do? What else could we do? We could go the other direction. Right? Two, we flip. Two, let's flip. So uh, loops can change direction. Uh, what this is, well, formally, if I have to write this up, I'd have to say that there's a map from the loop space to itself that takes a loop and flips it. So it sends it to, we could call it minus the loop. So this is the loop that, that does gamma of minus 1 times. Uh, again, if you <coughs> if you think in terms of uh, the real line, 0, 1, you know, if I, uh, 1, minus 1, if I, if I, if I flip by minus, I'm going to map my loop here, but this is the same as taking it in the, in the other direction. Okay, so we could do that. What else could we do? Change speed, oh yes, that's a huge, huge thing we could do. <laughs> Correct, right? In fact, you know, what am I doing here? Both of these maps, they have what am I really doing? Right? More. Any map from S1 to S1, any continuous map from S1 to S1, it's a reparameterization. Right. I can. What I've done is I flipped this one. This is a map from S1 to S1, and uh, and I have rotated S1. Right. Induces a map uh, from the loop space to the loop space. So if this is phi by by you know whatever uh, f phi by f phi of gamma is gamma precomposed with phi, right? I take, I take S1, I do my phi, S1, and do my gamma x. OK, yes? You said rotations and, and flips, but do you mean any continuous map? You mean like Here, I could do, so rotations and flips are examples, because I could rotate S1, or I can flip S1. So do, do, do you mean just like an orphans, or do you, do you mean all continuous maps? I, d I mean any continuous map, yeah. If, if you, I can precompose by any continuous map. Uh, I could do the trivial map, for example. What happens you if I? Around? Yes, that was my next. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to ask. <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. So examples. <coughs> Maybe it's good to have the trivial map, because what happens if I do the trivial map? S1 to S1 that takes t 
to zero. What does it do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't collapse the loop, but it just remembers only the base point. This will be it will then this is the loop from Lx to Lx that takes gamma to gamma of zero. A constant loop at the base point. Okay? Uh, but we could have done we could wrap around. Wrap around. Okay, S1 to S1. Uh, S1 goes to brrrr. <laughs> okay, many times. As many times as you like. Uh, then this does the same thing to the loop, right? It will send gamma, which is now a loop, whatever it is, to uh, brrrr. Uh, no, not like that. <laughs> it's too complicated to draw, right? Oh, come on. Yes. Like this, as many times as as you like, okay. But of course, you know they are also, as you were saying, they are also all the just think reparameterization. You know, think even diffeomorphisms of S1, right? I can start stretching a little bit. You know, instead of running S1 at constant speed, I could go very fast and then a little slower and then stay. I could also stay constant for a bit. That's not a diffeomorphism anymore. But you know, I can I can do all sorts of things with the reparameterization. So it's a big space, but there's a big, big action of the self map of S1. So so if we study the space, we should remember that there's this big group, or oh, more than a group acting. Yes. Sorry, so when we talked about rotation privilege, why did we consider a map from S1 across the loop space? Ah, yes, because I like to think of it this way. Uh, but what I you know. Let me rewrite the whole thing then like that, uh, because because I will, yeah, I will want to. At some point, I will I, I will want to get to homology, and then I want to really think of the interesting part of it, which is take the whole of S one at once. Okay. So so which is why I want to think together, but but no, formally. Let me write this too, right? If you have, we have. Uh, maps S1 S1 cross LX to LX, right? So this is a way of, you know, whenever I have a map, this is our little phi here and a little gamma here, then I get a phi of gamma, right, in this, in this notation. So we have a map, this is a map from this space cross that space to that space. And then we could ask, you know, what are the interesting things in there. Yeah. Anything I forgot? So so what I've been doing is all the things that come from S1, right? But by definition now I've put everything that comes from S1. Everything that comes from pre-composing with S1 is is there. So now Mora should complain. You know what have I forgotten? <laughs> you should say what did Mora told tell you? <laughs> okay, there was something called the Goldman bracket. The Goldman bracket. Do you remember that? Okay, so so here's a question. So where are we? one, two, three. Is there a product? Can we do a product of loops? So is there? Uh, a map like this. I take LX cross LX to LX, something like this. Uh, remember, there's this Goldman bracket. What is the Goldman bracket? Uh, <coughs> well, this was on the surface, right? A surface, and then you have loops. Well, what were these loops? These were uh, so here's one loop, and here's a, another loop. Should we do this? Like this? Okay, this is a loop alpha, this is a loop beta. Uh, so alpha and beta, they were, uh, they were homotopy classes of loops, well, free homotopy, 
three, three homotopy classes of loops. This means that you look, you think of the loop as a map. You think of, you have a map alpha from S1 to your space. Here's a surface, surface of genus G. This is our X, okay? This is our X. Uh, we look at alpha as a map in here, but we only think of it as up to, up to homotopy. We're allowed to change this map. We're allowed to change the map by a homotopy. So we're allowed to deform the loop. This is the same as, you know, uh, really, I mean, there's alpha, which is a map, and then there's the homotopy classes. This is the same as saying these are alpha, so beta is also a map like this, and alpha and beta, they are in a homotopy classes, which is pi zero of the loop space. This is the component. We're looking at how, you know, things, okay, I'm allowed to deform it within, without sort of cutting it, right? I'm allowed to deform it. That's what this were. Uh, okay, we have loops or homotopy classes of, and we say free to say the base point is not fixed. This, this doesn't, there's nothing telling me that I have to la leave the base point. <coughs> and so it just rotates as it likes. And then what was the Goldman bracket? It said, well, look at the intersection points of these curves. One, two, here. Okay, and the Goldman bracket, okay, now it's, I have a bracket and I have a, these homotopy classes is not so nice. Uh, that's life. The Goldman bracket is a sum <coughs> over intersection points. P in alpha intersect beta, where I chose, you choose uh, transverse representatives. They have to intersect nicely. You choose transverse representative. You sum over the points. There's a sign, plus minus. And then you take uh, alpha P product beta P, so at, at a given point, you can start doing, uh, follow the one curve, alpha, it's not very red, and then follow the other curve, blah, 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 like this. Okay? We could, if they intersect at a point, then we can do one curve and then, uh, and then do the other. Then we take the free homotopy class. So, yeah, one could ask, well, can one do something something like this? Um, more generally, not just on, 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 on homotopy classes of, of loops. Uh, so the answer will be yes, but it will take a little bit of time to get there. A uh, little bit of thinking of a lot of things might, might, you know, how would one do this, right? So, so, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll go through the ingredients that we will need. What do we need to do this? Well, uh, digression one, at least one thing I've done is I have done a product of loops, which was I took the one loop and then I took the other loop, okay? So this is one thing we need, but this is happening in loops that intersect, that have the same base point. Okay, these are called the base loops. So base loop space. So there's something called the base loop space, usually denoted omega x. This is now the space of based maps from S1 to x. This is the space of gammas in the loop space, so it's a subspace of the, of the loop space such that gamma of 0 in S1 is equal to x0, which is a fixed base point. In x. Okay, so now I have my x, and I have a base point somewhere, x0, and I only look at the loops that start and end at that point, okay? It's still a crazy space, but uh, they have the common feature that they always start and end at that point. Can we assume something on X1 is uh, half connected itself, or? 
Well, it, if it's not path connected, so suppose it has another component here, <coughs> I won't see it, right? There will be no loop that will hit it because it's in a different component, and they have to, they have to hit it because S1 is connected. So if it's not path connected, then you might as well throw away all the components that are not. But, uh, but, uh, but obviously, then, if it's not path connected, this is saying that it depends on the choice of base point. Okay, so you have to be careful with, with this, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. So let's 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 think pass pass connected. Um, okay. So so what can we do here? Well, if the loops do share this common base point, then we can do this con concatenation product. So there is here. Yeah, there is a concatenation product. On the base loop, so it's a map loop x cross loop x to loop x, and it takes a gamma and a delta, and it's it goes to concatenation of gamma and delta. This is do do first gamma and then delta. Okay. Here's my gamma, here's my delta, and then I can do the one and then and then the other. Okay? So so base loops are good. They have a concatenation uh, product. Uh, that was that was one thing that showed up in this uh, Goldman bracket. It was we were taking products of that size type, right? The other thing we've done is, before we took this product, well, we had to somehow intersect these loops, right? So there's somewhere there has to be, if one has, if one wanted to do something like this Goldman bracket, we also need to be able to intersect in some sort of sense. So let's think about intersection. Uh, so, yeah? We also need to have formal sums. So. Ah, yes, <laughs> correct. <laughs> sums, <laughs> that's correct. Yes, yes, we will have to have sums also. Uh, anyway, the intersection is always is going to need the same thing as the sums. Sums they don't happen on space, right? As soon as I write a sum, it's not on the space. We're going to have to go to, at the very least, something like a chain, the chains, the singular chains, for example, of the space. We have to do something algebraic, otherwise we can't sum. Uh, but the intersection product it also won't live on the space level. It will also be. Uh, on the level of uh, of homology. Ah, homology. Yes, we have to talk about. Another question. Um, yes. Are you aligned for for non separable spaces or like because then your base loop case will depend on the base one. Oh yeah, that's what we discussed. Yeah, uh, you mean this? You mean non connected? Non hmm? connected. Not not non separable. I don't know. I'm uh, all my spaces are good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> there may be, you know, uh, Hausdorff. Yes, I don't. I don't ever. Uh, you know, I. I do. You know, in the in a minute there will be manifolds. In in once half a minute there will be <laughs> manifolds. Think manifolds. You know, in the end I want to talk about manifolds. So nice spaces. No, and think connected. Yes. Okay. No strange spaces. <laughs> the loop space is strange enough, right? It's uh, if we started with something strange, it would go go crazy. Uh, oh, I don't know what happens. Digression. <coughs> where are we? Two. Intersection. The so-called intersection product. Uh, okay, so 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 yeah. So I said half a minute, maybe that's too much. Suppose now x is m is a manifold, right? So I'll I'll try to write m when I say manifold, but uh, when I think manifold, uh, we have a manifold. So this is a really nice type of space, and you could look at uh, a b inside x m sub manifolds. So for example, 
uh, m is a surface. This is the only thing we can draw, right? A nice manifold, you know, is a surface. It's a nice surface like this. And submanifolds of a surface, well, if they have to have, you know, a submanifold of small dimension, they better be uh, curves. For example, uh, this could be A, and this could be B, OK? Uh, some manifolds, and they should suppose they intersect if A and B intersect transversally, and this transversally they should intersect the ID is like this, yes, A, B, that's good, uh, not not start doing things like this. OK, transversal. Uh, I'm not going to be much more precise. Uh, if they intersect transversally, if they intersect nicely, then their intersection, A intersect B, is again a submanifold. So it will also be nice. Uh, what are the dimensions? If the dimension dimension of A is P, dimension of B is Q, dimension of M is N. Okay. What is going to be the dimension of the intersection? Well, you should think, you know, locally everything looks like Rn. And we're looking at submanifolds. They look like planes of a certain dimension in Rn. Okay, and this means that what you when you do, a, you should think, you know, define a submanifold, define a plane by a bunch of equations. <coughs> How many equations do I need to get to dimension p from dimension n? This is like n minus p equations, right? If I have n minus p equation. Uh, you know, each equation goes down one dimension, right? So I have to go down from n to p, I get n minus p equations. This is n minus q equations. Uh, okay, so A intersect B. A intersect B. Well, start, let's say we start in A. Uh, we are in dimension p. And then we have to also be, so, so it's, you know, I have n minus p equations for A plus n minus q equations for B. Okay? So this is, uh, this is it's defined by 2n minus p minus q equations. So, so the dimensions, <coughs> dimension of a intersect B should be n minus this thing, 2n minus P minus Q, which is n minus 2n is minus n. It's P plus Q minus n. So let's think about this a, a second more. This is sort of the, 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 by definition of being transverse, this is what, you know, this is what transverse means, is that it, you know, the, we are in the intersection. These equations are independent of these equations. <coughs> That's what transverse means. So to be A and B, you have to have both these equations and those equations. Therefore, these numbers have to add. And if they, if they don't add, uh, then it's not transverse. OK? What happens if this number is huge? It's bigger than n. What, I what happens if I have so many equations that this is bigger than n? No, P and Q can be, well, P and Q, OK, th there's a limit on how big they can be, because P and Q are, uh, because this is at most 2, is 2n. You know, the biggest that it can be is actually 2n, <coughs> right? Because P could be 0, would be a point. Q could be 0, that would be a point. Then, then this is 2n. What does this mean for my intersection? It's empty. It's totally negative dimensional. Zero plus zero minus n is negative dimensional. That doesn't mean anything. But think, you know, we are in M. <laughs> I have a point, 
and a point, most points don't intersect. Right? And being transverse for points means they don't intersect. They should not. Okay? Uh, same thing in, in, in R3, if I have two lines, most lines don't intersect. Being transverse means actually they should not intersect. If they intersect, this is not a usual, you know, if their equations are not independent, it's not a usual situation. So they should be. So if the dimensions are small, transverse means, means they don't intersect. And if you know, they intersect sort of as little as they, as they should. Uh, OK, transverse intersections and dimension. So yes, so now we have to get to homology, because this intersection product is defined uh, only <coughs> in homology. So I'll do a little bit of recap of singular singular homology. So x is a space again, any space. Then we have something called a singular complex, singular chain complex. I didn't know the C star x. Uh, it's a chain complex, so that means it's a bunch of sum n greater or equal to 0. That's what it looks like, c n x. Uh, and there's a differential with d square is 0. Uh, where what are the c and x? Well, they are algebraic objects. We have to decide what we work over. We're going to work over. We pick a ring or a field, whatever you feel happier with. I'll denote it k. And I'm thinking the integers or the rationals. You can think the reals if you like. OK? I'm going to think these two. Uh, either one for the moment. Uh, we pick this. And then we say c n x. So this is going to be a q vector space or a module over z. Uh, it's by definition is, again, something with maps. I'm going to take maps, continuous maps, from something called delta n into x. And then I take k. So these are maps. By definition, this is formal sums. Uh, a1, f1 plus ak, fk. The ai's, they are in my ground field, field or ring. And the fi's are maps delta n to x. Okay, So I just, it doesn't mean anything to sum maps, so I just formally sum them. I call, I call, I, I do, my elements are sums. What I, it, it doesn't mean anything else than what I wrote. Uh, and what is delta n? Delta n is a simplex, delta n. Uh, I'm going to use the following uh, model of the simplex, t1. It's the set of t1, tn inside rn. Such that 0, t1, tn. We're going to play a lot with the simplex, so we I want to know really what it is. Uh, and I want to play with it in this form. This looks like delta 0. n is 0. It's a subspace of r0. Of, well, r0 is a point, and you know, it's a point. OK, a point. Uh, delta 1 is a subspace of R1 of things t between 0 and 1. It's the interval between 0 and 1. Okay. Uh, delta 2, well, you can work it out, uh, but it's a simplex. It looks like this. This is maybe why we tend to call it delta, because it looks like a delta. Okay. It's a two simplex. Uh, delta 3, I'm going to draw it, and then you, I can't draw them anymore, and you can guess. I mean, you know what they look like now. OK, uh, this is the three simplex. It looks like this. Uh, and you keep going. Uh, what, do they, what do we need to know uh, is that they fit into one another. So the, uh, the n simplex, so this is called the n simplex. n simplex has n plus 1 faces, we call them faces. Uh, 
the zero simplex has one face, which the uh, n plus one one face. Yeah, we don't think about the faces of the zero simplex. Uh, the one simplex has two faces, two like boundaries. It's easier to think of the faces of of the of the two simplex. It has three faces: this one, that one, and that one. Uh, this one has four faces. There's one here. There's one there. There's one on the back there, and there's one below. Okay, it's always like that. Uh, you will, you can, and you will write them out if you haven't seen these before. Uh, so these are these faces. They look like the previous simplex. There's a, there's a. We can write them as map <coughs> bi from delta n minus one to delta n. Okay. Uh, yeah. So i is between zero and n. n. Um, and these are used to define the the differential, this D here. So D is a map is a map from C n x to C n minus one x, and it takes on generators which are the maps f. <coughs> it takes a little map f. So f goes from uh, delta n to uh, to x, and it sends it to uh, sum minus one to the i f of the i. So I can write a sum now because by definition I have sums, and so this goes from delta n minus one d i to delta n f to x. Okay. Uh, fact to be checked. Uh, check tomorrow when we have talked about simplicial sets. Checked tomorrow uh, is that if you do d twice d square, it gives you uh, zero. But this is related to the fact that you sort of, yeah, that's the way these things work. I don't know. Okay, singular. That's the singular complex. Uh, good. So now we have. Uh, by definition, when you have something like this, you can <coughs> uh, dimension of. Let me write this out. We did this computation, right? Dimension of A intersect B was P plus Q minus N. Let's just keep this. Uh, so, so from a, when you have a chain complex, you can define homology. Homology of x, by definition, is uh, the homology of this chain complex. Uh, maybe I won't get into this. Uh, if you haven't seen homology, look it up uh, tonight. But what you do is you, took, you use the differential, you use the kernel, the image of this differential. Take the kernel module or the image. It's a meaningful thing to do, which we do many times will do. Again and again, okay. Uh, so there is something called homology. This is the homology of x. Ah, yes. But uh, elements in the homology are represented by uh, elements in the chain complex. So when we talk about homology, we'll think of uh, sums of simplices like this. So what's an example of a something? Example when a my submanifold there inside M is a submanifold. Then I'm thinking I'm going to do a, a higher dimensional submanifold. So here's my A. It sits somewhere inside M. I can triangulate it. I make lots of triangles in there. Uh, <coughs> okay, we triangulate this gives you a sum it gives you a homology class A which is a sum of uh, simplices of these <coughs> inside I mean in the chain complex or in, 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 in the homology uh, so if A has dimension 
p, then this will be a sum of, you know, it'll be a sum of maps from, from delta p, right, from the p simplex. <coughs> We're mapping. We have a lot of maps from the p simplex. The triangulation is going to give you a bunch of p simplices. You can take the sum of them, and if they fit like this, they will represent they they will represent this subset in some in some reasonable manner. So so we can think of a sub manifold as an element inside uh, inside the homology in that dimension uh, of of the manifold, and and the intersection product. So there's a so this is an old theorem that says that there is a product and sort of what is called the intersection product which is so for M a manifold for any manifold closed manifold M. Uh, so it goes from the homology HP of M, tensor the homology HQ of M, to the homology HP uh, plus Q minus N of M. And it satisfies that such that <coughs> if A, B are Submanifolds, transverse, transverse submanifolds. Then, then this thing will realize their intersection. So, then, if this is my product, if I take A and I do the intersection with B, what I get is the intersection, the class of the intersection of uh, of A and B. Okay, so there exists a way of of doing this on the whole of homology, realizing the intersection. This is sort of uh, the things people were doing in the old days when they started doing homology. Uh, it's actually not so easy to do in practice. And I'm not going to construct it because it's a little bit too complicated. What I'll do is I'll relate it now. I'll, well, I'll claim it relates to uh, another product, which is called <coughs> the, cup, the cup product, which is easier to define. Um, but yeah, there exists such a. There exists such a thing. So if we go, if we are happy to go to homology, then then we can do intersections, uh, and we don't even have to talk about transversality anymore because it's if they were transverse, then they you know it does that. But otherwise, uh, yes. What do you mean by the bracket there? Bracket. Oh, the the class it's the class represented. Oh, sorry, do this. Okay. Yeah, do this. Yeah. So of course I'm I'm also claiming that this doesn't depend on my choices. Well, I have a submanifold. I can choose a triangulation. So it will represent the same homology class. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But in, in practice, and so there's, a, there's an exer one of the exercise today is just to say, well, you know, if you know that such a theorem is true, then if you want to compute a, uh, an intersection product, if you can represent your class by submanifolds that are transverse, then it is just computing the intersection. And so that's easy. So in, in, in this, so it's, it has advantages. Yes. Um, is this something that works like precisely for Poincaré duality spaces? Yeah. Or, I mean, like, I, I'm That's where we are going. <laughs> Poincaré duality. But like, yeah, it doesn't work for anything besides those. Or uh, no. Yeah, I don't know if there's there are other generalizations or something like this. But but it's uh, <laughs> yes. Hmm? Are you smoothly embedded? Uh, I don't think this needs smooth. I think these are topological manifolds. Oh, immersed. Uh, sh sure, probably yes. If they are immersed, you are, are you asking if they are transverse? If they are immersed submanifolds, and you do a transverse, you would think so. <coughs> Uh, because it has to do, you know, as long as, especially if you stay away, it has to do with, 
you know, locally it should look like a nice transverse thing. And, you know, and where they don't intersect, I don't care what it looks like because it only takes value where they intersect, right? So I guess, yeah. Um, yes. So, so, so there is another product. We are talking about lots of products. We talked about the concatenation products in the base loops. Now I talk about intersection products. Uh, there's another product if you are, if you have <coughs> heard about uh, cohomology, you probably have heard about something which is called the cup product. Uh, this is related. So, and we will need the cup product. So let's do the cup product also. Cup product. So this is fun. This is very concrete. Uh, so first we need cohomology. Uh, so there's something called the cochains. Cochains of x, singular cochains. X is now again any space. Uh, you can look at we call them C. Let's say C n x. It's a hom from C. Uh, n x into k. So remember, maybe think, maybe think q. This is q, and this is a vector space, a q vector space. I think z, and this is a z module, hom into z module. So q vector spaces. You can do that. Okay, you can look at this hom, uh, and you know we had this map d from uh, from from c n to c n minus one. This gives you a map. D dual, if you like. Maybe this is confusing, so let me call it D also. Uh, from C n x to C n plus 1 now, x, by taking on generators f, f, <coughs> how do you want me to call them? Uh, alpha, it's okay. Alpha, alpha from C n x to k, right? There are too many maps, right? Because there are maps in here also, right? These were f's before. We have a map from c n to k, and we create a new map, d alpha, which is alpha of d. Bah, this is confusing also. Let me just write it. C, it has to go from c n plus 1, c n plus 1 x, then we, d, we do our d from earlier, c n x, and then we do alpha. Okay? So the differential goes the other way around, but it still satisfies that it squares to 0. And therefore, you can also take homology, but there's now a chain complex the other way around. So the cohomology of x, by definition, is the homology in the same sense as before, but now we take these cochains instead. Uh, and we take this, this differential that goes with the cochains. Definition of the cohomology. <coughs> Uh, it looks very innocent. We have done it basically the same thing. We just turned around. We just added more maps. Uh, now we do maps from maps. Uh, what we've gained, which is uh, surprising, is we have gained a, pro a product. So the cup product, there's a product that goes from C P X tensor C Q X to C P plus Q X. OK, what does it do? Uh, well, if I have so this is a cup product, I have uh, alpha in here and beta, so alpha tensor beta, and I have to give you uh, alpha cup beta. OK, and alpha cup beta, it's a map. It's an element here, so it has to, it's a map from C, the lower p plus q, x, to k, OK? But what is this? This was k maps uh, delta p plus q into x, OK? So elements in here are maps. We're looking at what it does. The generators are maps. You know, I have my delta p plus q mapping. This is a little sigma p plus q, let's call it. I have you know, elements in here. They map simplices into x. Okay? Now I can think of my simplex. It has these vertices. right? Let me call them. It has, it has one more vertices than its dimension. 
v0, v1, v2, blah, 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 v, p plus q. Okay? And what do I have? I have a map from the p dimensional simplices, and I have a map from the q dimensional simplices. Now I have a p plus q dimensional simplex. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use my first map on the beginning of the simplex. I'm going to restrict. I'm going to use alpha on the restriction of the simplex to the, to the beginning and beta on the end of it. Okay, so alpha, alpha p beta of such a map, sigma p plus q of, you know, think, you know, think the simplex v0, you know, vq, uh, p plus q, thank you. It's going to be, I'm going to take alpha restricted to, you know, uh, to, uh, no, alpha of sigma p plus q restricted to v0 vp, a p simplex, and then I'm going to take beta of sigma p plus q restricted to the end of it, so vp, the, you know, the q dimensional phase there, vp plus q. Uh, and, you know, this is a number, this is a number, and I'm in a place where I know how to take a product, and so I can, I can take a product, okay? So this is very concrete, okay? We take uh, it's complicated because there are many maps, there are maps of maps and so on, but we have to evaluate a map on a map, <laughs> two maps on a map, and uh, yeah, we, we do it on generators, a generator is a map, and we say, okay, we restrict the first, <coughs> we restrict this map to the first side, and then to the other side we apply alpha here and beta, and beta in the end. Turns out this is, so this is what is called a chain map. This means this induces a map on, 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 on homology that is on, on the cohomology of the space. Okay. So this respects the boundary, the boundary operator. So right. this induces a map, a product. So cohomology of so P X tensor HQ X to H uh, P plus Q of X. Okay. We were talking about another product. I promised this had any, something to do with it. It's still there. Um, we were talking about a product in homology when the space was a manifold. And now I talk about a product in cohomology for any any space. These are related. So theorem, this is also an old, old theorem. Uh, if M is a manifold, closed manifold, orientable, all my manifolds are closed and orientable. Nice manifold. Don't start thinking strange things. Uh, I'm going to write it. Closed, orientable. Um, we have this. We have, uh, there's something called Poincaré duality. So we, somebody was mentioning Poincaré duality. Uh, uh, we have the, uh, what do we want to do? Cohomology here. The cohomology HP of M is isomorphic, there's a map called the, this, so this is Poincaré duality, you cap with a fundamental class. This is a map which is very much like this sort of uh, thing. It goes to Hn minus P of M. Okay, if you haven't, okay, let's take it, take this for a fact. If you haven't seen this before, won't have time to, to do this, but there is an isomorphism. Manifolds have this very special property that the piece cohomology it's a little it's very surprising, right? Because this is about n minus p dimensional simplices in X. This is about p simplices p simplices in X, right? I mean it's dual, blah blah blah, but still it's still about p simplices. But yet you have this isomorphisms if you go between homology and cohomology. Uh, here we have 
a product, the cup product, so HQM uh, tensor, so here H n minus Q of M. So we can do the cup product here, H P plus Q of M. We can do Poincaré duality, uh, H n minus P plus Q M. Okay, so these are isomorphisms, so this way Oops, I can go like this. This is a new product in, in homology. There's a product here. In uh, fact, this is maybe up to sign <laughs> the intersection. Uh, this is the inter intersection product. This commute section product. Uh, let's check at least. Check at least the dimension check uh, what was the intersection product it took p and q to p plus q minus n okay so p is now n minus p n minus p plus n minus q minus n this is where i should land if i do that product uh, this is equal to n minus p plus q do we agree with this or do I, I have n plus n minus n, this is n minus p minus q minus p minus q, yes. Uh, at least it has the right dimension, okay? This is not something, <laughs> this is as much as I could check right now, uh, this is not something you, you just prove so easily, you have to use what is called tom point drag and constructions and so on. This is a side of the story I'm not gonna tell you, but. We're going to talk about these cup products and intersection products. They will show up. Behind this, there is the Tom Pontragon construction, Tom collapse map. There's a whole side of the story that uses all these things that are behind here. But but I won't I won't say a word about this. So so that's what I wanted to say today.